Hi, Gary. Hi. So good to see you. Nice to see Hi. you too. Hi. You Hi. are Neil? Yes. Yes. That's Neil. Yes. Neil Vincent Matthews. What are you? Do you have Portuguese background? <laughs> no. <laughs> where, you, where, where did that name come from? Neil Vincent Matthews. Um. <laughs> Um, I'm actually from, um, my family is based from Kerala. So uh, there, there is Matthews, not Portuguese, uh -huh. but there is Matthews. No, because <laughs> because uh, it's a very um, English name or a Portuguese name, because I know that uh, India has been, you know, with different conquerors, the English, the Portuguese, mm. and so on. So the names... Uh, Neil <laughs> Matthews is very, is like a very English name, like my name, Gary Marcus Judge, is a very English name. Right. Uh, well, right, how are you doing? Gary? I'm getting yeah. one minute, uh, Mariam, I've got yeah. to confirm your speaking language, it's like, uh, no, just, it says here. Okay. Because I keep getting these messages popping up here, so I'll cancel that. Okay, we're okay. How am I doing? Uh, I've been quite busy, actually, because um, yesterday it was pretty stressful because I'm working on this translation. And uh, as usual, they wanted everything for yes, you know, that everything was like urgent. And so there was a lot of pressure, kept getting this, um, is it ready? Is it ready? And then they would change the translation and then they would add things on. And then I had to make sure that everything was like, you know, um, was the original copy uh, the same as the translated copy and so on so it was like uh i couldn't make me i couldn't make any mistakes so i was pretty yeah. a little bit stressed yesterday let's say <laughs> are you relaxed today <laughs> because we're just having a conversation <laughs> sure. yeah so, so uh, shall we start yeah yeah, yeah and also neil is going to ask me some questions all right no? Uh, it is like, going to be a coaching uh, kind of a thing and he he will I mean the two of you will just talk and I will be muted right I just, just introduce the two of you and uh, then we'll start okay? okay how old are you Neil um I am uh, 12 going to become 13 in this month Jesus you're a very mature guy <laughs> 12 going to be 13 you're very mature Anyway, I have three children, so I know uh, where you're coming from. So I, I, let's let's have a chat. You just you ask me whatever you want to ask me, and then I'll try and uh, help and answer the questions. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, so let's start. Yeah. So hello, audience, and welcome to yet another episode on growing up is tough. And today we have a coach, uh, Gary Marcus Judge who is an executive coach and mentor. Uh, he's the founder of the Green School in Italy, providing language education globally. He runs the Be Well Hub series, where he connects business and mental health experts with curious minds. His passions also include playing tennis, traveling, and photography. Gary is the author of the book, Free to Fly. And... Uh, what do I say of our other guest, Neil Vincent Matthews, who has also come up again for today's episode. He's a curious teenager, and I must say he's also sportingly agreed to do this episode with us. So welcome, Coach. Welcome, Neil, to the podcast. And I just can't wait to see where this conversation goes. It's all yours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mar Mariam, for inviting me. Thank you, Neil. Uh, Thank you. Where would you like to start, Neil? So what kind of yes. a question, question would you uh, like to ask me? A simple question we can start with. Okay. Um, so I have a lit little brother named Andrew. Uh, okay, he is uh, two and a half years younger to me. Okay. Uh, but so what that, so he's what? Is he ten? Nine and a half, ten, right? Yes, nine and a half, ten. Okay. Um so what uh, the uh, thing is that every time uh, I go to correct him, 
um my grandparents and parents uh, get angry on me tell that i am troubling him but in turn when he do, uh, troubles me or does anything wrong uh, i don't get to scold him or get angry to him and then uh, and then some and then sometimes all the responsibility is on me always and uh, he doesn't help so they don't care uh, every time i am the only one who has to go and help or do the work and the and all the uh, and it's like uh, uh, when i see that why 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 do i have to do more and he has to do less my mother says that he's smaller than you so you have to do more but i think that um, he also should do equally to me all the time i'm the one doing all the work and he just sits sits around in front of the tv or in the mobile okay and so what what was what is your question what would you like to what what do you what, what do you want to ask me um that how to get over this feeling that we are not being like i i am the only one who has to do all the work so i want to like understand how to get over this feeling of um, being sad every time uh, i think that they are always taking care of him only and i feel little bit jealous but i still love him but i feel sad yeah i have three children and i, I know the feeling yeah, i know the feeling that uh, but i think in in life that you know that uh, you you there there are there are there are always uh, situations where you seem to do more you give more and people give less i think the idea is to come to say um without thinking that i'm doing something it's just that you do it because you want to do it you want to help your parents or you want to help your your brother you do it because that's the way you are it's the way i mean you're 12 years old now but uh slowly slowly you start building on these things these concepts called values the way you are the way people see neil the way people talk about neil and so though you're still young now and maybe it's, you're not interested you just want equality because you want to do the same and you want your brother to do the same however you will be seen in different ways by your grandparents by your parents by your friends and so whatever you do you have to understand that you're doing it for neil you're not doing it for anyone else yes. so the way you do things how much you do things with a smile on your face or with an angry face is all reflective of neil neil is a person who will continue in life not just now but also later on and so it's up to you how you want to approach this there's no right or wrong and no one can tell you to do it this way or that way we all do it in different ways but this is the quality that will define you as you continue in life with your friends at school the teachers and so on um so uh, i have three children as i said and the one in the middle i have one is the the, the female she's uh, and then we have a smaller one a younger one and then one one the one the one in the middle is is completely compassionate this person i don't know where this person came from but he does everything that defines him as a person not as my son and so when i talk about him or anyone else talks about him they talk about him in the way he is opening uh helping uh compassionate empathic and so these are great qualities for people you know moving uh, moving through life and so see that as a value of yours neil so when you do more feel appreciative because you are able to show who you really are all right maybe that could be something so when you do it it's an opportunity to show that it's an opportunity to show uh, your your true self yes thank you okay does, um, does that make you feel better now yes a lot better <laughs> it's not easy it's not easy because i can understand you when you i mean you know you're young of course and you want you know why am i doing more than that person why am he why is he or she getting more than me and all those kind of, and you're feeling a little bit put to one side you're feeling a little bit jealous maybe a little bit envious of someone who's got more than you but just be content with what you have and how you are and how you show up
and do what you can, nothing more. Mm, yes. You want to yeah. ask something else? Another, another question? Uh, another... Uh, yes. Um, my second question is that um, sometimes uh, when my um, elders or someone elder to me gets angry at me, mm. I feel... Uh, to uh, say something back but I feel that I'm going to hurt their feelings or I'm going to talk back to them so every time they start uh, getting angry on me or, or saying something I get angry I start arguing and then um, and then my mother gets angry on me and uh, then I feel that why is this happening to me only and uh, why, why do I feel that uh, they are doing wrong or I'm doing right? I'm not understanding. And it feels like uh, every time somebody screams at me, I'm like, uh, I have to say something back. I start arguing. Um, how to like uh, cross this bad habit of arguing every time? Okay. Good, <laughs> Good question. Bravo. Good question. Um, you know, Neil, we go through life, we have a lot of stimuli, a lot of things coming in our way from school, from friends and family and sport and so on. Um, not everything is what we like. It's not everything the, how we say, how we see life and how the way we want it, right? And we've got, we've, got an, we've got a possibility to, they call it a reaction or a respond. You can react or you can respond, okay? What's the difference there? The reaction is you hit me, I hit you. Okay. You shouted me, I shouted you. Hmm. So it's basically is boom boom. You hit me, I hit you. You yeah. and so is there. There is, there is no uh, space in between that. The other hand, you've got something called to be responsive, not to respond. Respond means you know in a, in a, in, a, in a way you're also thinking of the other person. So how do you do that? How do you create that? It's, it's a case of creating a bit of space between the what you're receiving and what you're giving. And so when you react, you're reacting without thinking. You're not in control. Very often that happens when you get angry. You're in a car or someone pushes you at school and you just hit them. You're not understanding why or why they did that or what they're going through. And you're just reacting. So the next yeah. time someone shouts at you, try to just stop for one second, okay? Breathe, or maybe you can even look the other way or look at something. Just take that connection away from that person shouting at you and try to respond in a more controlled way. What's the advantage of that, you might say? You say, I want to shout back. I want to hit that person, <laughs> right? Why not? Because that's the emotion that you have immediately. Yes. And um, that's it. You're, you're angry and you feel like discriminated or you feel like you've been wronged and you want, to, you want to show them who you are. But when you do that, you just get down to their level. And so there are two angry people shouting at each other. And so where is the winner? And where does that go? That just es escalates and gets bigger and bigger. And in the end, uh, no one is right. But when, no you show, no, but when you show control and you are calm and you're not showing that you're angry, you have more power. Because the other person at certain point doesn't know what to do. They might feel immediately, yeah, they, you know, they've won the battle. But when you're in control, and you've given yourself space and you've let that person explode and say what they want to say. And then just say, can I just tell you what I think? Or you will see that immediately when you do that, you have much more control, much more power. And the other person will, will really see a, a higher, a higher being, another person there who is in control. And I think that's important. That's what you got to do. So the next time your mother or your father or someone shouts at you, don't answer back. Stop for a second. Give yourself a little space. And then calmly, without raising your voice and losing your head and control, just respond and see what happens. Yes. Hmm. Um, 
what what happens if uh, like it's a friend if the argument is going on and uh, and then um, if i uh, be calm and give a calm reply and they even more start venting out on me or uh, continue criticizing me then what should i do i, I uh, feel hurt inside then that i'm not able to do anything and this person is uh, criticizing me in front of everyone okay so why is the, uh, the question would be why is the person criticizing you for uh, what reason like what uh, why will the like with a friend why will the person uh, when the person does that to me i feel hurt inside and uh, if i try to stay calm and uh, they just feel like i am weak and uh, uh, i am i have become scared for them and they continue start uh, shouting okay uh is is this a friend would you consider this a friend no Somebody... like at school uh, something happened or so this is not a friend no not a friend um, a classmate maybe a classmate and a classmate says something to you about what give me give me an example um like uh, once what it happened in my school uh, the monitor or here we call it sia uh, that person had uh, my my face of my friend's birthday and i was uh, dis- uh helping him distribute the chocolates in the class that time this uh this girl comes up and then she takes and then she sneakily takes three chocolates from the bag when he had already given her one and i got so angry at her i sta- i told her that uh, what are you doing do you don't do not uh, you don't have any manners or what and in the next period she went and complained to the te- teacher and the teacher started shouting at me she didn't even give me a time to respond or tell what happened even the person the, the my friend whose chocolate was stolen he also uh, started saying that uh, she has taken or uh, she has but ma'am has complete blind faith on the uh, monitor and she thinks that everybody is lying uh, my, bo- we both are lying and she sta- and she punished me okay and uh... So maybe the, where where was the point? Where do you think could have been the point where you could have intervened and you could have done something correct? Where? Um, I think when she took the chocolate instead of uh, uh, screaming at her right then, I should have directly gone to the teacher and told her. But I was like, you are you are the monitor. You are the role model for the class. You shouldn't do like that. we are all different neil <laughs> we are all we are, everyone is different we have different backgrounds different upbringings and so we are all different i think but in in that moment you were right now you you, you know with lucidity with with uh, awareness you're seeing that that was the moment where you should have stopped and you were right to do that and gone to straight to the teacher and said that but by you saying you shouldn't do that and you're the monitor and it's not right whatever but you didn't say that you just thought that you kept uh-huh. it to yourself yes. and then you yes. maybe you said something to her in a very reactive way and she yes. was was uh, insulted or she was uh, you know offended and so she went to the teacher so you gave her the power whereas before when you went out it's like you know trying to do, but do it calmly without losing your head mm. i think that everything has to be done if it, everything is done whether it's an argument whether it's also if someone's criticizing you as you said they're criticizing you they, they, they're well first and foremost the question is are they an expert in something to criticize you do they do what you do in a different better way or what why are they criticizing you and um, no there's no reason because we all do things in different ways and um so it's a little bit of just you know understanding yourself and just being calm and just saying okay i do it this way i make coffee this way you make coffee that way why are you criticizing me we do it in different ways yes so 
Exactly. Um, just observe yourself. There's a lot of observation, you know, when you're doing things that like before you start, before, if you lose control and then you're in trouble, go back the steps and just say, where could you have made a difference? Where could you have stopped this, all this flow of actions? Where? Mm. But, but I think you're right. What you said before was you, the, uh, the, the, the stop should have been, as soon as the girl took the three extra chocolates, yes, it's there that you should have met, you should have done something, but you let it go. Uh, yes, um, but um, like uh, uh, in the heat of the moment, I get uh, so angry uh, that you do like 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 that to somebody, and then you have and then while doing wrong you go and tell the te teacher about somebody it's like you instead of taking the blame on yourself you take uh, you shift the blame to somebody else that's what made me so angry and uh, i was really sad after that because i was doing really well in that class and after that the teacher was very angry with me <laughs> ah well shift shifting the blame is responsibility like you know if you do if you do something wrong you know it you, you know there's no way you can shift if you've done something wrong but then again you know i mean not everyone is responsible not everyone is courageous to say i did wrong and they but you know then you go then you understand who are the people that you want around you that's also very important when you say the word friend it's got to be someone that you really want around you you a, a, a similar person like neil so yes. the kind of person you are, the values and the way you see life and the respect and so on is the kind of people that you want around you and they are your friends. Yes. Tell me a little bit about your, do you, do you, are you sporty? Do you play sports? What kind of, uh, what do you play? Yes, um, I play uh, uh, football. Okay. Um, means uh, soccer, football. Yeah, football. Yeah. Okay. What's your position? Uh, I am uh, center defense. Okay. What 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 are the qualities that are are needed in that position? In in that position, you actually have to be faster than the attackers, because okay. what because when the ball goes forward, you. Uh, kind of have to run behind the ball but as soon as the opponent takes position of the ball you have to be faster than the than the opponent's attackers to reach back to your post to defend the goal mm -hmm. and uh, you have to be uh, courageous enough to go in front of a, uh, a ball which has already been kicked by the attacker which is full speed and uh, cover the goal with your body without catching the ball with your hands you have to cover the goal with your body all right, all right. Do you win? Do you lose? Um, we won uh, SFA Sports for All, um, a tournament which was held in Ahmedabad. Uh, we came third place in that. So, what 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 are what are your emotions when you lose? Actually, I feel scared even uh, before the match starts. I feel scared about losing. I'm always scared that we might lose. Always. Is there is there a possibility you might lose? Yes, it before the match is always a 50-50 chance. So why why are you scared? Because if we lose all the hard work which we have put to get till that point will all go in vain. Do you think the, the your opponents have a 50-50 chance as well? Are they thinking the same? I don't know. Well, When you play against another team, um, um, they are also afraid of losing or not? They are also afraid. So how can you change that and give you give yourself an advantage? Mm, how, can, how, can, how can you have 51% and the other team 49? By uh, viewing the game as just a game, not as uh, uh, 
very a life or death matter like if we lose the world is finished and uh, like my mom told me this that it's just a game it doesn't matter if you win or lose you just have fun and come Mm, I don't agree. I'm 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 a sporty. I play tennis. Okay, I used to play football. My two boys play football. Um, I followed them all over playing football. But the thing is, like you know, um, there's always a possibility you're going to lose. You can't win all the time. You're always going to. There's always a possibility, even if you are Ronaldo, or you're. I mean, when you play football in a team. How many players are in the team? Eleven. Hmm. And are all the eleven Neil Vincent Matthews? Um. Are all the players Neil Vincent Matthews? No. No. And so, you, when you arrive at the football match, you are sure that you're going to give hundred percent, right? Right. What about the other ten? Um, I don't know. They might give hundred percent. They might give ninety percent. Okay. And so, what what can you control? My performance. Okay. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. So when you play football, tennis, you control your performance. My son was the penalty taker for the team okay and you know the penalty taker has a little bit more pressure yes right? and he would say to me dad uh i'm so scared i'm gonna miss the penalty because when they were given the penalty but he was good but he had this anxiety of like yeah oh the pressure and i said to him i said so what can you do as a penalty taker what can you control uh we can control if how we hit the ball and how uh, how our a penalty only our penalty how it goes exactly so you can control how many steps you take mm -hmm. you yeah, can control you can... the way you shoot exactly you can control you take one or two or three or five steps to the ball you can do that you can put the ball in the on the on the position you can do that yes you can uh breathe before you before you go <laughs> you can do that uh maybe you can decide if you want to go left or right you can decide that yes you can, if, if you're good you can say i'm going to put it to the left or, to the right. or you can decide if you uh whatever so you decide what are the things you can do uh, on the other hand on the other side you have the goalkeeper yes Right, and the goalkeeper is also deciding what he's going to do. Mm, you, yes, you can't, you can't you can't control him. No. So imagine you hit the ball perfect. To the left, you took your three steps. The ball is going, 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 and the goalkeeper dives and he saves the ball. Are you? What happens? My penalty is lost. Okay, but did you do your best? Yes. Did the goalkeeper do his best? Yes. And that, that's all you can do. And give so my the, best. Give my best. And just you give your best. Don't expect other people to give that. You you do your best. Mm. Yes. And so focus on yourself and focus on what you can do and do your best. And if that makes a difference, then the team will win. Yes. My so best no, if, if it no, works. Exactly. There's no need to be scared. You just say, uh, Neil Vincent Matthews will do his best today. I will run. I will help my teammates. I will be calm. I will not shout. Uh, I will give 100%. And then at the end, we'll see what happens. Yes. <sighs> the, 
because um, there's this thing called uh, in coaching called the locus of control, the locus of control, where you have the inner control and you have the external control. Okay, but external, you can't control the weather. Yeah. You can't control in a football match the referee. You can't control the other players. You can't control um, the wind. No. You can't control that. But you have the locus of control, which is the inside in, inside of you that you can decide how you're going to be. How you're going to be. Yes. And so, which is better? Inside control. Exactly. So if you have that, Neil, at school, in football, in, in the family, just control yourself. Yes. And that will make you really a good person, a powerful person, and people want to be with you because they know who you, then you are a strong person. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. No, thank you, Neil. You're doing a great job. It's so wonderful to see Neil. You're so aware about yourself when you get angry, when you're triggered and everything. This conversation is just wonderful. And I'm sure it's going to help you what the, uh, the coach has just spoken with you. Right? I think yes. because... Because football is very close to your heart. I know that. <laughs> you can relate. Yes. What he's just spoken with you. Right? Yes. Yeah. So are you happy about this conversation? Very happy. <laughs> he was a bit nervous <laughs> before. Yeah. And I was like, it is just a conversation the two of you are going to have. And now I think he's much better. Yeah, I can see the confidence. <laughs> I have this conversation with my my children as well, you know, because now they're older. I've got the youngest one is 16. And okay. um, it's it, what, what you're doing there is really you're investing time in, in yourself, in understanding yourself better. And so just be just just remember that everything that you do represents neil vincent matthews so how do you want to be seen how do you want people to talk about you how do you want someone wants to be your friend but why do they want to be your friend that's the question yes and they want to be your friend because you are reliable you are strong you are confident you're a person who's in control People want to be with you. People don't want to be with people who are going crazy and shouting and aggressive and they're not in control. And those kind of people, they're a bit dangerous. So we, we don't want to be with those people. No. So now as you move along through life, just ask yourself every time you lose control, is this the way you want to be seen? Is this what you want people to say that, oh, that guy Neil is a bit crazy. He keeps losing his head all the time. You know? <laughs> no. No. You don't want that? No. Are you, are you the captain of your team? No. Would you like to be the captain of your team? If possible. It's all possible. How could you be the captain of the team? Who is the captain of the team at the moment? Um, um, there is uh, one boy uh, who is a really good at uh, who is a really good at um, shooting, and is a striker. Um, he is really good at shooting balls, and he has made lo lots of goals just from the half line. Oh, okay. Yeah, so what, because what? of his performance, sir keeps him the. Uh, uh, lead uh, captain of the team. Okay. What, what what do you do? You like him? Do you like him yes. as a captain? Yes. Yes. He's he's in my class. He's my classmate. What, what what do you like about his 
his leadership or his leadership style. He's the captain, so of course he scores a lots of goals and so on. Okay, but what do you like about him as a leader? Um, he doesn't get scared really fast by the other team. He uh, is uh, always like, we can still do it. We still have a chance. Uh, no matter how much happens, he will always give his best and motivate others to do theirs. Their best. Do, does he ever finish on the losing team? Does he ever lose? He loses. But he comes back? Yes. And is that good? It is good. Okay. Okay. So when you're looking for qualities that you would like to add to yourself as Neil Vincent Matthews, you look at other people. You look at this captain. And you see what he what's good in him. Confidence. I'm sure he's scared. He can't not be scared. He's a human. He's going to be scared. Everyone's scared. There's no way. There's no one that missed the Superman who's not scared. He's scared. But he doesn't show it. No. He shows it by being confident, by motivating the team. Yes. He loses, he loses matches, then he comes back. Right. So he shows that he's resilient. He can, he can stand the challenge. So these are all the qualities that, if you like, you put in you put into yourself. Yes. And then you work on those qualities. It's not just to, just to say that I I'm resilient or I'm confident or I'm not scared. You have to work on those. And then you show the other people. And so when other people talk about Neil, like we're talking about the captain, we talk about Neil. Okay. And someone says, "What's Neil like?" My God, he's never scared. Or he never shows that he's scared. He loses, but he comes back for more. Wow. Uh, those are the qualities that people, you know, that, that take you through life. Hmm. So put them into your into your baggage, in your football kit and say, all right, I'm going to be this. I'm going to be this. I'm, I'm not going to show that I'm scared. I'm going to talk positive. I'm going to come back for more. I'm going to lose. I'm going to lose. And that's just part of, you know, life is like that. You, you win some, you lose some. Mm -hmm. But when you lose, you've got to make sure that you lose in the right way. Not blaming other people. No. No. No, no, no. You, you you lose in the right way. And you come off that field. You're so tired, satisfied. You gave your best and you lost. It happens. Hmm. So you could be the captain. There's nothing wrong. You, If you want to be the captain. I can, can be, be the, the captain. captain. You can be the captain. I got a story of my son, James. He he became the captain of the team. Okay. This was two years ago. And uh, my my son James is always late. Timekeeping is terrible. Okay. He's very focused on himself. And so if you want to be the captain, you have to be a leader. A leader means being an example. When you're yes. an example for the team. You're, you're courageous, you're on time, you're motivating, you're resilient. That's what you, that's a, that's a captain. The captain is not the person who scores the most goals. That's the technical player. He's good at scoring goals. But can he communicate? Can he talk to the team at half time when things are going bad? That's the difference. So if you want to be the captain, and it's a great prestigious position, you have to work on those skills. And then, and then you can, and he became the captain. Yes. It's possible. Hmm. So the next time we speak, you was telling me, Captain Neil Vincent Matthews. Okay. Okay.
lovely conversation uh, i guess neel uh, you you have more questions or is this okay no no yeah thank you so much gary you see uh, i mean welcome. even i've been inspired because there are things going on around me as well you know and and this relating the mindset that we have with some kind of a sport that we play is so crucial because you can automatically relate to it right without even giving it enough thought you can just imagine it in your head and then it's done so i just love this conversation and i'm sure many many do relate with this also so um since you are with this uh, business and uh, you know leadership i would like to ask you this is a different thing but i would like to ask you what kind of uh, qualities should a leader or even a person who's just going to begin a business right because we're talking about teenagers and people who are just going to start uh, in life with a career and if someone is considering being a businessman or considering even being a leader in in a team right so what kind of qualities do should they have what kind of uh, mindset should they have you know when they're looking at this yeah well i think you know one of the fundamental things uh, mariam is respect i think respect for yourself and respect for others you know for me that's something that i can't uh, compromise if someone doesn't respect me i can't work with them uh i respect everyone from the cleaner to <laughs> the ceo i respect everyone but i want the same back from me so that's one of the things that it 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 goes through in every in everything that you do the way you are with someone outside on the street the way you are with your client the way you are with your employees or your colleagues and so i think also respect for yourself is like how you want to be treated and there are no there are no um compromises that i say on this part if someone doesn't treat me in the right way i just go do i go the other way so that's 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 my leadership style i i like to delegate i like to give people responsibility i give them the space um to try i support them i i say if they make a mistake they come back to me we talk about it uh mm -hmm. and i understand that you know we can't always be right we can't always win and so that is just part of the of the journey the failures are just different ways to make to get to success and if i see myself i've been running my business for 25 years and i'm sure i've made so many mistakes along the way but um it's the courage to say that this is just part of me it's the process that i enjoy doing uh, um i enjoy being a leader i enjoy running the team i enjoy the conversation and it's just my role i'm 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 in a role and you're in a role and other people you know whoever's a secretary whoever's the teacher whoever's the so when we have a conversation and if it's a serious conversation i always say i'm here because <laughs> i'm the leader i've been nominated the leader or because and so i have to do this with the well-being of everyone not just for gary 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 is nothing gary is just moved to one side mm. So Gary is the person inside and now you're speaking to the person outside who is the leader. Yeah. So I think that's that's but very if, important. Yeah. Not yeah, to get lost in, if, not to get lost, lost in your role and think, "Oh, I'm the leader, I'm the leader." And no. Like we're talking to Neil about, you know, even if the, it's the captain, everyone is scared, right? Everyone even Face, not even facing a challenge even in a normal thing suppose as a, a business person you go and meet a client of you meeting for the first time and maybe that client is going to uh, be a very big client for you if if you get in the business so uh, you are meeting them for the first time of course there is nervousness of course there is fear right and you you try and show up confident and you might even feel confident also but what is that 
uh, quality, I would ask. I mean, how do you practice that? I mean, to feel confident, you have to even, you know, from the inside also be confident, even though you are scared. So how do you bring that around? You know, this is something I feel that kids, as they grow up, uh, there should be a style to develop this. Because uh, even while facing, like Neil was saying, right, someone is screaming at them, or even if they're meeting someone for the first time, uh, you know, people face this kind of fear. So how do you think they could develop this kind of a skill? You know, you're, you're, you're afraid on the inside, yes. But you're confident, you're showing up confident and you are feeling confident also, even though you're afraid. So how do you think that goes? You know, Mariam, um, it's like when you do public speaking, I think you do public speaking as well, courses or something. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. you, you, the word that comes to me is being authentic, being yourself, knowing yourself. So when I ask okay. you to speak about yourself, you can speak about yourself for maybe all for 24 hours because you know yourself well. Maybe. Okay, maybe, hopefully you do. You say, <laughs> you know, I like this, I'm like this, I've been there, I've done this, I know this. You know yourself mm -hmm. better than anyone else. I'm okay. afraid of this, I'm fond of this, I, I'm allergic to this. You know yourself better than anyone okay. anyone else seriously that's the way it is so if you can just be yourself in everything you do authentic it'll come across as the authentic mariam gary neil and the other person wants to see that it's when we try to be someone that we are not that we mm. feel out of our out of our comfort zone we don't feel right we're trying to, we're afraid because we're not, we don't know the other person that we're trying to be. Right. Yeah. So how, how can you be someone that you don't know very well? Because you might know the Mariam number two, but that Mariam number two has holes <laughs> because you don't know. And so you're pretending to be number two when you meet Gary. Gary asks you a yeah. question and you're completely lost because you don't have the answer. And so what happens right. is you are not authentic. You're not. And so you have to be who you are. You have to know yourself, know yourself well. And that's, and that's all you can do, whether it's Neil on the football field or it's you and I in a business coaching, you can only be yourself, nothing more. And so when you go for an appointment, I go for an appointment and I'm Gary I know what I can do. Um, that's it. Uh, I, I love tennis. I love traveling. I'm, I see you and I say, oh, I, oh, you look very sporty, Mariam. Do you play sports? Yes, I do. Oh, and I can talk about tennis because I love sport. I, I am Gary. I am. That's the real Gary. And then you and I will connect on that. Oh, we will not. But that's out of my hands. Going back to the okay. locus of control, what we spoke with Neil, the locus mm -hmm. of control inside of me is only be who I am. And uh, but me too. In the past, I tried to be someone who I wasn't. And it comes into that imposter syndrome where you are trying to be someone in an, a person that you have in your head, but you don't have the the foundations to be that person and you and yeah. you will, you'll be found out and once you're found out the whole castle falls down and then you go into some sort of a, a trauma or a breakdown or burnout or whatever Makes and sense. so the 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 expression invest in yourself very what neil is doing now is to understand himself and to, uh, to observe himself and understand the things that trigger him, that make him angry, the things that he doesn't like, that girl stealing his, the chocolates and so on. He's understanding. It's a process. He's understanding. And then he has to, be, he has to just be that, nothing more. Yes. Simple. Well, thank you so much. 
thank you so much to us this been a wonderful conversation i think uh, gary we'll have another session with you maybe on some other topic maybe let's see uh, yeah. but i totally love this uh, coaching session this conversation how was it for you gary what it was good thoughts? i'm very impressed by neil thank you neil for your time and your questioning uh, great continue thank you sir what you're doing. continue doing what you're doing and if you don't become the captain you'll become the vice captain who knows <laughs> Yes. Mariam, thank, thank you, you sir. for the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to, to come here and talk to you guys. It's wonderful. You both have given your time and shared your knowledge with us. It's, it's really wonderful. Neil, how was it for you? It was very uh, nice and uh, I really liked speaking to Gary, sir. And um, I think I'll be able to control my inner self better. great great brilliant so that's it for us now uh, see you soon we've had a great episode yay thank you <laughs> thank you so much i won't be uh, putting off the recording because you know sometimes i take up snippets from here and there so if you have anything else to say you can share it uh, yeah no i'm good i'm good Good, good. Great, okay. great. Thanks, Thank Mariam. you so much. Thanks, Thanks. Have a great day. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Bye. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye Vidal. It was great Bye. seeing you. Yes. How was it? Very great. Hi. Maza aagya? Maza aagya? Tension gaya? I said, breathe. Breathe. Perfect. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> how this this was better or the first one was better how was it? i don't how know was you don't know don't but know. you are a rock star huh? great yeah. what acha what acha second I time thank you neha <laughs> uh, nee, i can hear <laughs> you can hear <laughs> see i do bad ah uh, very good bal to banaye nahi chalo go have lunch Okay. okay bye 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 bye, bye. 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 bye.